Now the Pixel 9 Pro XL has been out for almost two months now. And I have a lot I wanna get off my chest. Now the Pixel 9 Pro XL is a great phone that has given me a great experience. The battery life is solid. The display is an upgrade from last year's 8 Pro. We have a ton of new features and it arguably has the best camera in the game. And even though the Pixel 9 Pro XL has been an amazing phone so far, I would be lying if I said that it didn't hit a few bumps in the road that stopped me from crowning it as the best phone of 2024. The Snapdragon G4 chip has been pretty bad when compared to Snapdragon and Apple's Bionic chipset. The videos have had discoloration at times, and there were some times where the apps would freeze on me. But despite that, the Pixel 9 Pro XL did everything that I needed it to do. And despite not being as powerful when it comes to competition, I think that when it comes to innovation, it's by far leading the pack. And in this video, I will be sharing my experience with you guys to help you decide if the Pixel 9 Pro XL is right for you. Now, the Tensor G4 chip has been much better at playing games when compared to last year's Pixel 8 Pro. Like for example, here I am playing Asphalt 9 on my Pixel 9 Pro XL, and here is me playing it on my iPhone 16 Pro Max. And you can see how good both phones look despite being very different on the spec sheet. My iPhone 16 Pro Max feels a little bit smoother, but the Pixel 9 Pro XL is not that far behind. It runs incredibly smooth, the frame rate was able to remain consistent and I rarely got any overheating after two months of use. And something that has been very consistent for me over the past two months has been a battery. I've tested how long the Pixel 9 Pro XL lasts with medium to high usage. I try my best not to do too much, but it was really hard since I really enjoy using my Pixel 9 Pro XL. I used social media moderately, texted friends and family, made phone calls, checked emails, and watched a ton of videos on YouTube, and I was able to rack up seven to eight hours of on-screen time a day. On most days, I'm getting seven hours, but that was pretty great in my book, and I'm ending my day with around 15 to 20% by the end of the day, which was just enough for me to collect data on who this phone is truly for. And since I was using my phone moderately, I didn't really need to preserve battery life, I didn't turn on power saving mode, and I used it to its full capacity. The Pixel 9 Pro XL supports 37 watt charging, which is much better than last year's 8 Pro in terms of speed. It takes me about an hour to go from 0 to 100 on average, and it doesn't overheat, which was a common problem on last year's phone. Even the wireless charging experience was smooth since it was reliable as well, and I mostly charge my phone overnight, and I try my best to plan my charges accordingly. I was also surprised that a lot of little features within the software didn't take a huge chunk of the battery, things like the always on display, 5G, and high brightness were on, but I was still able to last a full day which was pretty impressive for a phone of this price. Now taking a look at how the build quality is holding up after two months of use, the Pixel 9 Pro XL is a step up from last year, the flat display, boxy frame, and matte back improved the overall quality of the phone. The 9 Pro XL is one of the most comfortable phones of 2024. It's a very rounded phone that knows how to complement the hand whether it's big or small, and whether I'm holding it to watch a video or just scroll through an app, it always kept the same consistency. The flat display has always been a personal favorite, the buttons are very clicky and premium, the ports and mics are very discreet, and despite the fact that it's not the top flagship phone, I still consider it to have that quality feel after two months of use. Now when it comes to weight and feel in hand, the Pixel 9 Pro XL is definitely on the lighter side of the spectrum. It's a little bit lighter than my iPhone and my Galaxy, which definitely added to its comfort. It's not heavy to the point where it can be uncomfortable for a longer period of time, but it is heavy enough for you to notice it at first and get used to it after. And when it comes to durability, the Pixel 9 Pro XL has Corning Gorilla Glass Victus 2, and I dropped it twice since I first got it. There has been a little scratch on the display. It's hard to see on camera, but it is there. And my problem with Pixels has never been crack resistance, but it's always been poor scratch resistance. Since the Pixel 6 series, I've always had a bunch of unnecessary scratches on my Pixel phones from putting them in my pocket to very little drops, and this has always been my pet peeve when it comes to Pixel phones. But besides that, the Pixel 9 Pro XL has a really good build quality that has been holding up very well over the past two months. Now, the Pixel 9 Pro XL 6.8 inch display has been holding up very well, and even though I think it does need some improvements, it can still go toe to toe with the iPhone 16 Pro Max and Galaxy S24 Ultra in certain aspects. The resolution looks amazing. The brightness has significantly improved and it has a nice big flat display and I enjoy doing everything on this phone Whether it was entertainment or just casual phone stuff. The viewing experience is amazing I do get a lack of colors at times when compared to my iPhone 16 Pro Max or my Galaxy S24 Ultra 
camera but besides that it's a pretty solid screen overall now something else that i loved about the pixel 9 pro xl's display is how much it was able to use the screen like i really loved how it has the very tiny hole punch camera that barely gets in the way when watching videos the option to use swipe gestures is great as well because there are not many extra buttons on my display and again it makes the 6.8 inch display feel bigger than it is the brightness is still superb and it shocks me till this day because pixels have always had the lowest brightness when compared to other smartphones but i'm really glad that this is one of the many significant upgrades that google has made from the pixel 7 pro and 8 pro the responsiveness is insane like right here you can see me just scrolling through a simple app and it's crazy how fast the 120 hertz refresh rate is compared to my 16 pro max the fingerprint sensor has gotten better over the past few generations yes it is slower than my s24 ultra and 16 pro max but i think that this is the first time where google made a normal feeling fingerprint sensor and i hope they keep improving from there in contrast facial recognition is the worst when compared to the phones that i've talked about it doesn't really work that well at night and it messes up more than it should but i mainly use my fingerprint sensor so it really didn't bother me too much now when it comes to speakers i'm not going to say that the pixel 9 pro xl speakers are awful but I am going to say that they're far from being great. Many times, I'm turning my volume all the way up and I'm still disappointed. And instead of telling you guys, I'm just going to show you. Pretty nice to see you again. Secure and charge. Sir, Now moving on to camera, the Pixel 9 Pro XL provides nothing but top tier quality photos, whether it's selfies, outside shots, and even inside shots. And as always, Pixel phones have been good at capturing darker skin tones, the blur is subtle but not too much, and the added lighting was just right. Zoom photos on the Pixel 9 Pro XL were great. The more I zoomed in, I was very impressed with the consistency, the quality, and its sharpness kept up very well. Inside photos didn't disappoint either. The selfies were very nice since I went where I could get the best lighting, and they were extremely similar to my pixel 8 pro outside photos were the best in terms of lighting and quality very professional very exquisite and this is where the pixel 9 pro xl's camera truly shines now the videos on the pixel 9 pro xl were good but not great my face will look weird at times but other than that the outer camera did its best work you can shoot videos up to 4k and 60 frames per second which is pretty much the standard and many times i like to use the pixel as my secondary camera when shooting videos and the 9 pro xl is one of them the stabilization was solid and there were plenty of options when it came to molds that you could use and all right you guys that's it for my review on the pixel 9 pro xl it's a good phone that i think is 100 worth buying after two months of use and for the first time in a long time google has given us a great phone at launch and if it keeps up i'll be more than happy to crown it as the best phone of 2024 and let me know down in the comments do you guys think that the pixel 9 pro xl is the best phone of 2024 let me know peace